Hi guys, welcome to my channel. So on my Instagram recently, I put up a vote of what I should draw next between this lion cub and this flamingo. The flamingo won with quite a few votes, so giving the people what they want, this video is explaining the process of completing those soft pink feathers. If you would like to be a part of the voting process, please add me on Insta, and you can also see cards that I've had created of this print on Etsy. I'll put the colours of the pencils I've used in the description below, and remember to like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments below what you would like to see next. Let's get started drawing the flamingo. So the reference photo I got for the flamingo is from Unsplash and I'll put the name of the photographer in the description below. Usually with um, animals I'll always start with an eye or just something to give them a little bit of personality. But for this one because all of the feathers are on the left hand side, if I started with the eye on the right hand side then I would be leaning on my work the whole time because I am right handed. So I did start with the feathers on the left hand side. So the way that I tackled this is just just to do one feather at a time so making sure to pick out one feather or one section and then working on that one at a time if I just went over the whole clump and put a base layer down you get lost and you know there'd be a lot of work going on and you just get a little bit overwhelmed so breaking it down into smaller clumps is the way to go so the process for each of the feathers I'd start by gently removing all of the graphite with my kneaded eraser because if there is graphite on the page because the feathers are so pink and light you'll be able to see the graphite through so you need to make sure you get that up pretty well and then I would go in with the beige red as a base and then some of the pink matter lake and also the pale geranium lake where there was sort of orange tones I would go in with the terracotta and then build in different tones like cinnamon Venetian red and for the darker shadow areas I would use the burnt umber and the dark red as well and also where it's sort of orangey pinky colors I'd use the coral and making sure to go over with a bit more terracotta once I went over with a couple of base layers for the feathers, I would then go over with my Zestit pencil blender for each of the feathers. So I would use a brush with the liquid and gently go over to smush all of the colors together and make the color really stand out. And then once that dries, you can go over and pretty much do the same process again. And then towards the end, making sure that you're putting in the darker colors in the shadows. And then also I'm using the white Holbein pencil to blend everything together and get the really white sections in the middle of each of the feathers. I did use the white Holbein pencil pretty much on every feather. It really helps blend all of the colors together and gives it that washed out sort of pastel look, which is what the feathers look like. So that was a really good tip. And instead of the Holbein soft white pencil, you can also use like a Prismacolor white pencil or the Luminance white pencil is a little bit too firm, or you could use the Polychromos white as well, but they're not as waxy. So I would recommend either the Prismacolor or the Holbein Soft White. For the feathers at the bottom where they're sort of darker, I did the same process, but I would just go in with more layers. So I used um, the beige red as a base and then went in with the pink matter lake. Where it's sort of orange, I would go in with the light cadmium red, pale geranium lake, and then the dark red in the shadows, and also some of the brown tones like the burnt sienna. And in the very, very dark areas, I would use the dark sepia to make sure they're really dark. In different sections as well I did use an embossing tool where there's those really light light feathers over the darker areas so putting in the embossed lines before you go over with the darker colors will make sure that the white feathers are really standing out and then you can glaze over that with the beige red cinnamon or pink matter lake and that will bring the color down so it's not so stark white but it will sort of blend in with the other pink feathers so you can see when I'm putting all the colors down I'm generally holding the pencil on the side this is because I want to have really light layers and I want to have a lot of layers to get the color that I want I need to blend a lot of the colors together and do very light layers over and over again so holding the pencil on the side will allow me to get a lot of layers down and blend them all together and then and once you go over with the solvent and then back over again with more colors once you go over with the soft Holbein pencil it will smush all of the colors together and once all of the feathers
colors were in there this is when you can look back and start to evaluate all of the tones and when I say that I mean all of the dark and light areas so adding in some of the dark red burnt sienna and the dark indigo dark sepia into the shadows and then also into the lighter areas making sure to blend again with the whole wine soft white and I can also pick out some whiter feathers with the slice blade as well. For the eye I went around the outline really lightly with the nougat pencil and the yellow in there is a light cadmium yellow and also green gold and I went in with the warm grey one and blended all of that together. And then working around the eye is when you start to have to build in all of the darker pink colours and sort of get all the shadows in the right places. So I put the eye in and then went back to the neck and started to build in all the tones because I sort of wanted to build from the feathers onto the neck. With this sort of texture you just need to be patient and build up those colors really lightly. So again I went in with the beige red, the warm grey one, pink matter lake and then looked at the colors in there. So there was the terracotta, cinnamon, the coral and then in the darker areas doing the dark red and the brown tones as well. Once you have a heap of layers in there you can go over with the zestet pencil blender and then go back over with your colors to build up all the tones again and then going in with the Holbein soft white to give it that really pastel pink color as well. This texture is really tricky but you just need to keep looking at the reference photo and making sure you're getting the lighter areas in the lighter places and the darker in the darker areas and that's what will make it look realistic. So it doesn't really matter if you don't get the colors correct, it's more that you get the tones correct which is the light and dark colors. Then finally it came to doing the beak so I used the same base colors as before and then went in with the darker colors to map out all of the darker areas and then just slowly build up the tone so I used a lot of sky blue in the beak along with the burnt sienna green gold and terracotta in the browner areas. So this is the final result. I really hope that you like this video and some of these tips have been helpful. Remember to give me a like, write a comment and subscribe for my channel for more tutorials to come and also some live sessions. I'll have some cards of this printed up on Etsy eventually and if you like to see my progress photos remember to check me out on Instagram and let me know in the comments below what you would like to see next and keep drawing guys. Thanks. Bye.